So who's looking strongest and weakest for Warhammer 40k post data slate? Let's do a tier list of army strength for factions in the new game and points. Hello and welcome back to Warspace Tactics, where today I thought it would be interesting to talk through army strength in Warhammer 40k, so let's go through every single faction in the game, talk about their state before the data slates, how well or badly the buffs and nerfs have affected them, and overall where roughly I believe that that would wind them up with their army strength now. We're now a bit more of a week post the January balance data slate, and people have had a little bit more time to digest the changes, and even a few early tournaments have been played with the new rules. I'd say the data slate maybe wasn't quite as impactful as the enormous one that we had at, right at the start of 10th edition in the September one, but overall the game maybe wasn't in such a state that it needed quite such drastic attention. Most armies were within Games Workshop's apparent target win brackets of around 45-55%, to 55%, though that wasn't to say that there's not much they could have improved on. Lots of armies were at one end of that spectrum or another, and perhaps had terrible codex balance. It's quite nice to have some of the most exciting and fun units playable, and not just leave some armies with one single cookie cutter competitive build. For the most part, with a few exceptions, I'd say that armies tended to have moved in the right sort of direction following this data slate. For the most part, Games Workshop did indeed target the strong ones with nerfs, and the weakest ones with buffs. Maybe a few of the stronger armies were nerfed a bit too harshly, and there were a couple of the slightly weaker armies that I might have liked to see a little bit more for. Though criticisms aside, I'd say they made broadly moves in the right directions. With all that in mind, I thought it would be interesting to have an early sort of predictive look through the armies and where they might rank now. Obviously, at time of recording, this is very, very early days, only a week since the data slate, so barely any real tournament data available. People haven't had too much time to experiment with army lists and see what might work now. And I'm absolutely certain that some of the predictions on this tier list might well wind up as wrong. Consider this one a first take based on my own opinions and just general chatter around the points changes. It'll be interesting to take a look back in a few weeks time when there's more tournament data out to see where armies are really stacking up for real. So anyway, take these predictions with a bit of a pinch of salt, but let's do a tier ranking of the 40k armies into 5 main tiers, plus 1 suspected overall winner. I will go through them one at a time, looking at their previous performance and what changed for them. First up, starting out in tier 5, here are perhaps the armies that are just really not looking so great. I'd rank Blood Angels and the Adeptus Mechanicus here. Two armies that really have had quite a lot of issues that the data slate didn't really address. Blood Angels prior to the data slate were the weakest of the Space Marine Divergent chapters and tournament win rates at least. Around about 45% wins, they're still occasionally getting some tournament performance with Gladius. Unfortunately people weren't generally using their Sons of Sanguinius detachment very much. They received the Space Marine points changes, including some nerfs to some really quite important units like Scouts, Inceptors, Redemptor Dreadnoughts and things. Got a small boost to the Sons of Sanguinius detachment, where they generally hit harder on the charge now. On the charge, the Blood Angels get plus 2 to their strength as well as plus 1 attack, though unfortunately no points changes at all for the rest of the index, despite the Blood Angels' unique units being kind of weak. With stronger units for their unique stuff now, the Librarian Dreadnought still really quite interesting teleporting shooting units around. Can be nice in Gladius to deliver fire discipline combos. The Martis with Death Company is rather nice. Maybe Dante or Sanguinary Priest with jump packs alongside either Veterans or Jump Intercessors are interesting enough. Still though, overall, I'd say that despite the Sons of Sanguinius boost, Blood Angels were looking kind of weak before, and perhaps even more so now. I feel like at least some of their data sheets could have been helped out a bit, Sanguinary Guard in particular. I'd say perhaps the biggest nerf to them though is the Space Marine points changes. Having some of the best scoring options reined in a bit is definitely going to impact Blood Angels' strength. Otherwise, on a similar sort of win percentage prior to the data slate were the Adeptus Mechanicus, offering around about 45-46% to 46 wins at Grand Tournaments. Notably a faction where players were kind of disappointed with their codex, I think people might just like their elite infantry to be a bit more dangerous and meaningful, rather than just having loads of flavours of different flavours of board control chaff units. And that players really weren't happy to get basically nothing in the balanced data slate, and it kind of leaves them as they were before. Iron Striders, Dragoons, Cataphron Breachers, Skitari like Vanguard in Dune Riders, and some fairly big use of some of the other Skitari type units like Taraxi in the Hunter Cohort, which maybe seems to be one of the more consistently strong ways to play them. Overall, I don't think they're completely out of the running for occasionally getting some places at events and things, but it just feels kind of disappointing that they didn't do something a bit more exciting with the Abmech book. I feel like models like Core, Ross Stalkers, and the Castellan Robots would really like some sort of rules boost. Moving onwards and perhaps slightly upwards, here are the armies that have chosen to rank in tier 4. 
Following the changes, I think that these are ones that average players might still really quite struggle with. Flats win rates hovering around about the 46% before, though not being in a place where Games Workshop decided to give them meaningful boosts. They have chosen to rank Tyranids, Space Marines, Death Watch and Astra Militarum, and I'll mention Dark Angels here as well as their codex is weirdly sort of half released, so kind of awkward to put on a tier list at all right now. First up, we've got the Tyranids, maybe not doing quite so well in tournament performance over the past few weeks or so. Their win rate slips a little bit down to more like 46%, towards the lower end of mid-tier fairly firmly now. They would still say that despite being a bit more of a weaker faction in Warhammer 40k, they do have some okay internal balance in their codex, multiple good detachments that they can choose from. For raw power-wise, it was a slightly mixed bag from the data slate, Lost to Gene Stealers, the Norns, the Screamer Killer, Tyrannifex, and Toxicrine and Trigon, but nerfs to a few staples, Pyrovores, the Neuralictor, Death Leaper, and Gargoyles. I feel like Malaceptors and Exocrines might be joined by more Norns and perhaps the odd Tyrannifex on the front line for the Tyranids, and I feel like the faction will still certainly take its fair share of the lone operatives and Gargoyles, but just pay a higher points cost for them, and that will impact the strength a bit, maybe balancing out any of the boosts. Rippers and Biovores should still be a reliable way to score secondary points for the army. Overall, I'd guess they're probably going to be slightly similar in power, which maybe isn't amazingly good news, given that they were kind of low in the power ratings before. Seems likely that they'd remain at least somewhat similar to where they are right now, even if they are a fairly balanced codex with unit choice and detachment choice, meaning that quite a few units are quite playable. They still do have some things that would have been nice to see cuts on, like the Psychophage, though. For the other launch faction of 10th edition, the Space Marines do seem to be getting a similar sort of tournament performance, around about 46% wins for them, though within that they are an army that seems to have just massive variance in how well they play. Lots of players are struggling to make the standard boys in power armour work, though at the highest levels of play, top list like the Ultramarines Vanguard Spearhead tends to do okay, with Gladius, Ironstorm and Firestorm all having a bit of success as well. Some of the strongest Space Marine lists might choose to run themselves as some of the successors for various other options, which maybe does take out some of the strongest lists out of this data set. For example, I think Black Templars have a lot of draw if you're running a standard Space Marine army to run as them for things like free multi-melters on tanks and things. For the balance changes, they got some points drops to the Intercessors flavours, Outriders, Sternguard and Gilliman, but got some fairly painful points nerfs to Inceptors, Scouts, the Redemptor Dreadnought, Centurions and Aggressors. There's maybe a small boost to the Phobos Captain as well, being able to redeploy things with Infiltrate still in effect, which is quite nice for any Phobos Infiltrating units. Overall, it does feel like Games Workshop really has reined in some of the very best choices that the Space Marines has. The strongest units perhaps more than before, I think it's going to be detachment dependent now. Inceptors and Scouts are maybe two of the most common picks that were just taken for scoring almost regardless of your army. Now they're both a little bit more questionable. I feel like smaller numbers of both of them are still great. Infiltrators are solid for home field objectives, the Gladiator Lancer is still nice for anti-armour, and say that most of the good stuff is still playable, just had the shine taken off for it, which isn't really what the army needed. Overall, I feel like Space Marines are probably going to lose ground on plenty of other factions, though. They may have a codex with a crazy amount of options, and it might be more internally balanced than it was before, but overall I think that's probably come at the expense of a bit of overall army strength, with some of the most standout units getting nerfed. Maybe not great for an army where the average player was only getting a fairly low tournament win average before. For the Death Watch, I'd probably put them as a similar sort of level to the Space Marines. They may be realistically not very different to Blood Angels. It's a bit hard to know with Death Watch really on based on tournament stats. They do tend to have the single lowest player rate in Warhammer 40k. Though every so often somebody seems to do something interesting with them, mainly just with big interesting kill team units that can be good for combos like enhancements or certain stratagems and detachments. The Proteus kill team could be pretty scary if it's firing off with fire discipline maybe. For the balance changes, the Space Marine unit nerfs like Inceptors and Scouts won't help the Death Watch, and otherwise they didn't really see any changes to their unique data sheets. They did at least have their bolt weapon list brought into alignment between the app and the update though. So at least the bolt weapon stratagems in their Black Spear Task Force do work on things like Heavy Bolters and the Heavy Bolt Rifle. As their unit roster, I'd probably rate the Proteus Kill Team and their Terminator squads as a couple of the most interesting data sheets. Triple Cyclone Terminators are pretty threatening, though I feel like after the update there's not really going to be anything else to draw people to Death Watch more so than before. I still expect them to be a kind of niche and quirky army out there, maybe committing big to just a couple of big units with some massive damage combos dropping in on the enemy. 
As mentioned for the Dark Angels, I feel like we can't really put them on a tier list with any sort of intelligence yet, due to being in the sort of halfway where their codex rules are released, but their points costs aren't, and at the moment, at time of recording, we just don't know how good those points costs are going to be. If they do make some drastic changes to reflect the nerfs that they gave the Lion, the Landspeed of Vengeance, and the Deathwing Knight, then it, they could still be very interesting, but if not, then much less so. Currently, their points cost still reflects the Index, though it did have some pretty interesting changes there, I thought, including 30-point Black Knights, which I thought looked kind of terrifying with their Plasma Talons. If they remain at that, then they could be really interesting in certain detachment combos. The Space Marine rules changes won't have helped them very much, though I guess the Outriders being kind of interesting now isn't too bad for the Ravenwing detachment for people running that. And if Deathwing Terminators are just 5 points more than the regular variant, they seem good enough for the Ignores modifiers and the Watcher rules. Overall, yet to be determined, I guess, will be interesting to see how much strength they add compared with Core Codex Space Marines and compared with the other chapters out there. Finally, for the armies that are ranked here are the Imperial Guard. I still feel like they're a kind of interesting army to play with in-game. Occasionally, some skilled players do manage to get some big tournament wins with them, though it still seems that for the vast majority of players out there, they're still perhaps one of the single weakest armies in Warhammer 40k that didn't get boosts in the data slate. Maybe only things like Imperial Knights, Custodians, and Drukhari comfortably below them, and all of those got big improvements. Their data slate changes were a big nerf to the Manticore, taking it kind of out of competitive play versus the Basilisk, I think. A nice change to orders that now can be issued by officers disembarking from transports or arriving from reserves, really quite nice for certain units like Scions or Kazakin. And a clarification to the core Battleshock rules, meaning that if your squad's Battleshocked when it's destroyed, you can't bring it back with reinforcements. Overall, kind of minimal changes to the guard. I still feel like staples like Lord Solar Leontis aren't going to go away. Gaunt's Ghosts are still great for scoring. Scout Sentinels are nice and cheap to have as Outriders for the army, and otherwise most of the Index is really quite balanced. Dawns, Rosses, Chimeras, Tank Commanders, Super Heavies and Infantry all have their roles. I guess maybe Transport Vehicles might be getting a bit more interesting compared with before, now the Order's interaction works better. Overall, I certainly think that the army needed a bit more help though. They really were struggling a bit for most players before, and they have not got meaningfully stronger. I'm not sure they needed tons of help to get significantly more mid-tier, but a bit more than this. Moving onwards to tier 3, here we get into armies which I think have a bit more raw strength to them, or armies that were doing kind of fine before and just haven't really been touched. Here we've got the Thousand Suns, Grey Knights, Chaos Space Marines, Tau Empire, Gene Stealer Colts, Imperial Knights and World Eaters. Starting off with the Rubrics and Sorcerers of Zinch, we've got the Thousand Suns. They were doing alright before, a win rate around about 49 to 48%ish, fairly middle of the field. Lists often revolving around Magnus backed up by lots of Rubik Marines with various flavours of Sorcerers supporting them. They didn't get any core balance changes, but I guess did get a bit of a nerf to Demon Allies, where if you want Zenith loan operatives now, you're going to have to buy some Horrors alongside. Though even those I think aren't absolutely terrible if you just want to have a durable unit to hold down a point. Overall, I wouldn't imagine that Army List would change that much. I still feel like we'll mainly see Magnus plus Rubrics and Sorcerers. Maybe supported with some Rhinos, perhaps a Mutalith Beast, a few Chaff units to support and score things. The Scarab Occult Terminators still seem kind of rarely played, but I feel like they're not really all that far behind on the power level. Nothing particularly exciting in terms of changes, though I guess they might compete a bit better against some of the things that were arguably stronger than them before, but then got nerfs. For the Grey Knights, they look like they might be in a position to rise up very slightly. Previously, they had around about 46 to 47% win rate at big tournaments. One of the armies that tended to do a bit better in players that are utterly versed with their movement tricks, needing to get the best out of their crafty redeploys and teleport shenanigans. The big rules boost that they got in the index were Dread Knights getting significantly more dangerous heavy side cannons and better melee, though they did pay for that with their librarians being nerfed slightly, up to 110 points from 100. I feel like that's not so game changing that it'll really affect things that much. Overall, I'd say probably lists aren't going to change spectacularly. Terminators and Paladins likely to be the core of the list, often led by Kaldor Drago or still Librarians. Purifiers and Crow are pretty interesting, though I guess that some people will definitely be experimenting with Dread Knights now they hit so much harder. I'm not convinced that they're going to be in every single Strong Grey Knights list, though I feel like they're definitely way more playable than they were. I suspect they might gain a little bit of strength from this, having a unit that's got an option to be able to take out heavier things a bit more reliably, I think will be a big boost. Next we've got the Chaos Space Marines, who were one of the strongest factions in Warhammer 40k before the balance change, 
I feel like they are going to tumble down the rankings a bit, given quite comprehensive nerfs here. Chaos Marines really did take a broad battery of nerfs, Marks of Chaos not mixing in transport, two of their best stratagems being toned down in different ways, Accursed Cultists both taking rules and points nerfs as a very reliable unit to score objectives before, and then further points increases to Lords Chosen, the Dark Commune, the Forge Fiend, the Obliterators, Warp Talons, and the Eye of Zinch, and more restrictive demon allies than they had before. Overall, it does feel like just about every competitive facet of the army was taken down a peg in some form or another, and this might well be very different or bringing a lot less stuff than they had. I feel like it is going to be enough to kick them more down towards the 50% win sort of area. For stronger units, Chaos Lists often still tended to take at least some battle line with Legionaries and Cultists. It will be interesting to see if for damage dealers for the faction, things like Possessed or Terminators have a little bit more play versus Chosen and Lords and Rhinos. I guess some of the Chaos Tanks might genuinely look a bit more interesting versus things like Forge Fiends and Obliterators. Some people did seem to be getting good value out of the Predator Tanks and Vindicators before. I would say that most of their competitive options haven't been hit so hard that they're utterly ruined as well, but just less than that. And overall, I guess it might be better for internal balance for the book. Overall, though, I feel like Games Workshop has done enough to kick them fairly significantly down towards the midfield. Though just given the fairly powerful rules combos that Chaos can still do with marks and stratagems and the dark packs, I feel like they're not completely out of the running. Next up, we've got the Tau Empire, who had kind of middling changes in the data slate. They were on around about 49% wins before, and felt like an index that was at least fairly well balanced internally compared with most. I think you could make an argument for most of their units, which is definitely better than a bunch of armies out there. Their changes gave them one big nerf to Crisis Suits, going up to 200 points from 180. That will hurt quite a lot, given that they often tended to be a fairly central part of the army. They did get a few decreases to the non cold star commanders, the Riptide down to 165, and the Vespids at 65 points. I feel like Crisis Suits are still playable, though maybe it might just be one big block, perhaps alongside that early Cow Yon enhancement. And then beyond that, as mentioned, I feel like most of the Index is still playable, maybe Broadsides and the Tau Tanks picking up a little bit more of the slack in terms of core damage dealing. Devilfish and Breachers kind of nice to take the midfield. Plenty of cheap auxiliary units for running around scoring between Crute and Vespid. Interesting lone operatives with Ornvar, the Ghost Kill, and Shadow Sun, and plenty more. I feel like the Riptide might well be one that people take a second look at now it's 165 points. Its damage and defense are now genuinely quite good for the cost. Better in terms of damage than it is for durability, I'd say. But either way, I think it's really quite cheap for what it brings. Overall, might still take a small power hit due to the Crisis nerfs. I expect them to still remain mid-tier, though. For the followers of the Four-Armed Emperor, the Gene Stealer Corps were in a kind of similar place in terms of tawny performance, winning around about 49%. They got very minimal changes from the data slate, as you might expect for that. They did get perhaps a slightly surprising nerf saying that one-shot weapons can no longer be fired from firing decks, so a bit of a nerf for Goliath Rock Grinders or the Goliath Trucks with Acolytes in them. But the Pure Strange Gene Stealers did get a meaningful boost in my opinion, dropping down from 85 to 75 Kind of interesting as a first turn charge threat option. In general, their army builds tend to focus around stacking combos on neophytes or acolytes coming in from reserve, maybe some infiltrating aberrants perhaps, and some chaff units around there to score. I wouldn't expect to see any major changes for that. And maybe in a similar sort of place to the Thousand Sons, where they didn't really change too much in power, but several of the things that were stronger than them got nerfed, and they'll probably be able to capitalise somewhat on that. The Imperial Knights were really struggling prior to the update, win rates around about 42% after being hit hard by prior nerfs. Their data slate changes were lay low the tyrants getting a single reroll a hit roll and with reroll a wound roll rather than specifying specifically ones. And they also got points cuts for the majority of the index. Every single big knight went down besides the gallant. Helverins and Moiraxes went down. And even if the Warglaves didn't get a points cut, they'll still do better out of that tyrants rule their Thermal Spears being good recipients of those rerolls. After the Big Knights, I feel like Canis Rex and the Crusader are probably still some of the most interesting ones. They didn't really go down any less than the rest, and they were some of the more played ones before. I think that the points cuts plus the slight rules boost will probably be enough to push them more towards the mid-tier, maybe taking up their role as a bit more of a gatekeeper faction once more, really quite good at beating the weaker armies of the game, but for armies that can pass their stat check, they maybe have a little bit less to offer other than raw power in terms of clever plays that you can do for them on the table. 
On the other end of the power spectrum, World Eaters feel like an army that's got nerfed surprisingly punitively from the balanced data slate. They were doing kind of well before, win rates around about 52%, often a whole load of violent 8-bound and angron rushing the enemy as soon as possible, backed up by some berserkers and characters and rhinos most likely. I really didn't think that they were too far from being kind of perfect for 40k, but Games Workshop came down on them hard. Two of their enhancements were drastically less powerful, the Berserker Glaive, Master of Executions, is no longer quite as godly as he was, the Demon Prince was nerfed despite not being a good choice to start with, and then the points increases on the 8-bound Exalted 8-bound and Khan the Betrayer are all going to be really quite painful, given that they were often some of the units taken for the raw damage dealing of the army. They did get some points cuts to the Forge Fiend and Lord of Skulls. The Lord of Skulls I feel like is kind of interesting, I feel like it's certainly not going to be enough to outweigh the nerfs. Overall, for stronger units, I feel like Angron's still going to be auto-include, though a little bit less likely to resurrect than he was before. Maybe Berserkers might gain a little bit on 8-bound, though I still think that the 8-bound are going to be needed to do the heavy lifting for the Codex. Maybe we might see a few more quirky lists experimenting with Lords of Skulls and building the army in a bit of a different way to the slightly cookie-cutter builds that they've had before. Overall, I suspect that they're probably going to be back down in sort of mid-tier to maybe lower mid-tier. They could be towards the lower end of this list. It does seem that they've had some of their most important points boss reverse compared with where they were quite weak at the start of the edition. Moving on, and here are some armies that I feel like they might be towards the upper end of the power spectrum in Warhammer 40k post-update, though possibly not looking quite as standout as a couple of the other factions out there. Here I've chosen to rank Chaos Knights, Death Guard, Space Wolves, Black Templars, Adeptus Auroritus, and Chaos Demons. First up for the Spiky Knights, they were doing kind of well prior to the update, win rates around about 50%, usually very very Wardog heavy in their army list builds though, which did disappoint some people. Games Workshop seem to have gone out of their way to try and address that. Basically all the big knights by the Rampager went down in cost, and they upped the cost on the Wardog Brigands, the very efficient little gun turret Wardog. Otherwise the Wardog Executioner went down a bit. The Forge World Knights were largely buffed, though they did see a hit to allied demons being less flexible, given that battle line units now must be taken for other choices out there, so limiting options to things like lone operatives, but Nurglings will still be okay for them. For stronger units, when they nerfed the Brigand, I was sort of a little bit surprised they didn't also nerf the Carnivore a little bit. That still seems like maybe the standout best of the War Dogs now. For the other War Dogs, I feel like the Brigand isn't going to outcompete more of the more mixed role ones like Hunters or Stalkers. I feel like the points cuts on the big boys will be enough to make some people take at least some of them to competitive events. There might still be an emphasis on War Dogs overall, and I'm sure pure War Dogs spam will still be viable but taking a big boy to do a bit of heavy lifting and being a focal point of the army doesn't seem anywhere near as bad an idea as it was before. Overall, despite lots of points cuts, I feel like they're probably going to be in a sort of similar place power-wise, but just with a bit better internal balance. The Brigand nerf, I think, was an important one given that lots of lists were spamming six of the things, and the somewhat popular Nurglings being taken alongside went up in cost as well. The Death Guard were doing fairly similarly in terms of power, a nice 7 of 7's 49% win rate at tournaments typically, usually lists being fairly Plague Marine heavy. People were really going big on the Plague Marines and Rhinos, maybe with the Biologist Putrefire. The Death Guard got a fair few points, boosts and nerfs. Plague Marines and the Plague Burst Crawler both went up a bit. Death Shroud, Bloat Drones, Typhus and the Lord of Virulence went down. The Biologist Putrefire can no longer have, say, three of them all spamming the same grenade strat in the same shooting phase. Demonic allies were toned down a little bit, and Mortarian had his Ignore's Modifier ability clarified, making it a bit more powerful than some might have interpreted it before. Overall, not really a too bad mix overall, I think. I feel like Typhus is perhaps the single biggest winner out of all of this, given that I thought he was pretty good already for 100 points. At 80 points for his Mortal Wounds and his profile, he's just great. Death Stroud were already good and now went down further, and Bloat Drones at 90 points seems very cheap to have those in your army. I don't think that Plague Marines with the Biologist Putrefier will necessarily go anywhere either though. I think it might just be a bit more tempted to take one or two of those Biologist Putrefiers as opposed to spamming three of them though. Overall still look like they're in a good place to do solidly at events. Kind of a bit sad that they didn't take some sort of opportunity to help out the Blight Lord Terminators though, given that they were lesser played than some. Next up, for the Space Wolves, they were doing fairly similarly in power, generally tending to run very Thunderwolf heavy army lists, with the Stormlance Task Force being their most popular detachment. 
In the day to day, they had a few small subtle changes, a small boost to the Champions of Rush that allows Sagas to be done on each turn and checked then, so you could maybe get a few of them active a little bit quicker. I don't think it's enough to actually make that detachment good though, unfortunately. The Space Brain Codex buffs and nerfs. Nerfs to the scoring options for the Space Wolves aren't the best, plus things like the Redemptor Dreadnought. Though they did get a perhaps surprising boost in the Index Errata, making the Wolf and Hammers go from damage 1 to damage 2 was a big increase for them. I feel like despite the objective control 0 that they have, just the sheer movement, damage and defence of Wolfen are going to be well worth it now. 80 points for 2 toughness 5 wounds with a 4 plus invulnerable save and 4 damage 2 attacks apiece. I think it's now perhaps a deal that is hard to ignore. Otherwise though I'd certainly expect Thunderwolves to be at the heart of builds in general. Even if the Space Wolves have plenty of other fun options like Bjorn, Logan Grimnar with his big rerolls, then reason was for scoring, plus a few other good ones like maybe Blood Claws alongside Ulrich. I feel like they've come through this rather well and have probably gained a bit of ground on their Black Templar Divergent Chapter brothers. Might be a bit closer between them for the Top Marine Divergent Chapter now. Speaking of which, the Black Templars did get a few more specific nerfs besides the standard Space Marine changes, namely to the Firstborn Crusader Squad and High Marshal Helbrecht and Grimaldus, two of their best characters. They were doing very well before though, win rates around about the 55% sort of mark, pretty much flatly the single best way to run Space Marines if you wanted to win things. Their Righteous Crusaders was really nice melee support for things like Sword Brethren or Crusader Squads with a 5 plus feel no pain. It is kind of weird that they still seem to be running the best Ironstorm Spearhead, having a whole bunch of tanks with multi melters bolted to the top is good. Despite the nerfs, that still rate as pretty much all their unique units as really quite solid. Helbrecht and Grimaldus I think are still playable, though definitely less outstanding than they were. The Firstborn Crusaders are pretty excellent still to have a Las Cannon special weapon and a Power Fist within 75 points, and Saw Brethren, their Melter Tanks and the Primaris Crusaders all still good. Overall I feel like they haven't been gutted by the changes, though I've certainly taken knocks to key areas. I do feel like they've lost a bit of ground compared with other space ruins out there. Next up, the Adeptus Auroritus were actually doing kind of alright with tournament performance, win rates were around about 51%, but the majority of players felt they had a bit of an odd playstyle to them. Fairly weird feeling lists often tended to be the way that they won things, with lots of exorcists and castigators, maybe arco-flagellants in rhinos as central troops, and perhaps things like the Triumph of St. Catherine and, and doing some weird miracle dice combos, often forcing slightly excessive amounts of miracles through one multi-melter. In the balance changes, the Triumph now only double stacks miracles and doesn't get unlimited ones. There were points buffs to some of the key damage dealers that I think needed it, Repenter, Retributors, the Paragon Suits, Dominions and Zephyrim. And on the points nerf side of things, the Exorcist got hit fairly hard, the Arco Flagellants went up a bit, but probably still playable, and Val went up a bit, though arguably not really, given that she's always taken with Paragon War Suits, and if you did take her with a unit, overall the points cost has dropped a bit, but now she's no longer quite as auto-included for them, being the main reason to take them. For strong stuff from before, it looks like the Castigator, the Val Paragons, and the Triumph will all still be good. Otherwise, after these points changes, I'm interested to see what people will choose to support them with. I feel like most of their elite infantry have reached the points where they're at least kind of interesting now. Would be cool if a few more people did choose to use Retributors and Repenter. Overall, maybe it doesn't really seem like the worst for Sisters right now. Internal balance looks a lot better, and they don't look like they've lost loads of power on the face of it. Not the worst place to be in overall. Finally for this tier, I've chosen to rank the Chaos Demons. Previously they had sort of middling tournament win rates around about 47%, though in general the index was in a state where people weren't particularly excited to play them, just a lot of mediocre data sheets. Games Workshop nerfed a couple of things with Nurglings and the Blue Scribes being toned down, but given that they weren't struggling as much compared with some other armies in the game in my opinion, Games Workshop was maybe surprisingly generous with the amount of points boost that they gave them, around about a third of the data sheets that they have access to dropping down a bit. Lots of love for the lesser demons, various medium sized cavalry things, and even a few of the greater demons going down a bit. I feel like the Great Unclean one in particular looks fun at 230 points. That's a lot of fairly problematic raw defence for the opponent to deal with there. Again, kind of overall interested to see where people go with all of those choices being better. I think that lots of units look genuinely interesting. Blood Crushers could be really fun with the crazy amount of damage that they can do with certain combos. And things like Plague Bearers look genuinely very tanky for setting on objectives now, all the way down to 110 points. 
Overall seems like a medium sized to big boost, most of these do fall on units that weren't played as much, but I feel like it will strengthen the faction overall, taking them towards the top and mid tier at least, as opposed to towards the bottom, and they might well be stronger than that. Moving up in the world and we get to some of the armies that I think might be looking to be some of the stronger armies in 40k right now, perhaps some of the factions to beat post data slate. It is early days yes and it'll be interesting to see what emerges as the best builds for different armies, but here I've chosen to rank Eldari, Drukhari, Adeptus Custodes, Orcs and Leagues of Votan. First up, despite having multiple multiple series of nerfs to them, the Eldari don't seem to be out of the running just yet. They were pretty much the best army in terms of win rates before, about 58% success at tournaments with loads of event wins, usually tending to be in contention for the major prizes at tournaments in big competitive GTs. Games Workshop had hit them with lots of points increases before, now they've hit them with rules changes. Strands of Fate got cut in half, down to 66 Fate dice. The Fate's Messenger enhancement is no longer such a godly boffing rule. Phantasm got nerfed to D6 inches movement on infantry, so while it remains a potentially very powerful option, it's just nowhere near as reliable. The Night Spinner got changed to a debuff of movement of minus 2, much similar to other units out there. The Incarn can only teleport once per turn and only on your turn, so significantly more restrictive on where it bounces around. Wraithguard got points increased to 190, and Night Spinners went up to 210, hitting two of the most commonly played competitive units. Overall, that's definitely a big battery of nerfs, but they were coming from a place of immense strength, and a lot of these feel like they're maybe slightly more focal things that don't really necessarily apply to every single unit in the index, with plenty of stuff still looking quite good. I think Illic and Rangers will rise to the fore a bit more, and they were kind of fine before. Some of the anti-tank options like War Walkers just weren't really affected that much, they're still very efficient. We might see a few more jet bikes like Shroud Runners in play, a whole bunch of their objective securing units like Warp Spiders and Swooping Hawks won't like the Phantasm change, but otherwise aren't awful. I think the Avatar of Kane and certain characters like Fugan are still really interesting. Overall, they've definitely taken hits, but are certainly not utterly ruined. They did already win the single biggest tournament of the weekend after the balance data slate, showing they're very much not dead yet. That one was a fairly fun list, using a whole bunch of Fire Dragons in Falcons. Overall though, I think we've finally reached the point where Eldari aren't going to be the strongest faction in the game by a clear head, but I still think we'll be an army to fear. On the other end of the spectrum, perhaps the most improved army out of anything in the data slates might be the Drukhari. Before the updates, they were one of the weakest armies in the game, win rates around about 43%, and very low player rates as well. The biggest boost for them that Games Workshop gave, I think, is the Sky Splinter Assault Force, which has some really fun stratagem options, in particular the scary ability to throw big 10-man assault units, an average charge range of 24 inches out, and then get the Lance keyword. The Archon can lead the Incubi, which makes their melee scarier. Pain tokens giving extra AP in melee is a big deal for certain units, and that's all combined with some significant points decreases to a bunch of units, Grotesques, Helions, Reavers, Incubi, the Raider and Venom, the Talos, the Succubus, and Drazar. Between all that, a whole bunch of the Index is now looking very interesting. Ravagers and Scourges are still going to be great for the anti-tank fire support. Mandrake's good for objectives. The Talos were great before, and they're better now. Kronos and Ice for just raw toughness and pain tokens. Cabalites and Transports were a staple, and they'll still be great in the Sky Splinter. And units like Incubi and Witches charging quite so far out of those Raiders and Venoms now do look very, very scary. The Drukhari already seem to be showing their true colours on release weekends. They already won one big event and have done well at least one other, and both of those used the Sky Splinter formation. I feel like we haven't heard the last of them. Next up, and also much improved, are the Custodies. I'll be honest, as maybe a little bit more shaky about ranking these guys. Not sure whether they should be in Tier 1 here or back in Tier 2. They do feel like they've received a very solid boost. I feel like they're sometimes an army that's a little bit trickier to race in general, just due to them being so much better in slightly more casual environments compared with Cutthroat's top big grand tournaments. They were one of the weaker armies before, around about 44% win rates in tournaments prior to this, though they got some big boosts in the data slates. The detachment rule protecting against devastating wounds helps out against a lot of armies and units out there, and some of the core units that were already good got cheaper, Alarus, Wardens, Custodian Guard, and Virtus Praetors and their captain all went down, plus Trajan's Ignore's Modifier's ability clarified to work for AP and damage certainly helps out a little bit there. 
For stronger units, it looks like their core plastics are maybe just being boosted a bit above a lot more of their Forge World stuff, more so than before. The Alarus Custodian Guard and Wardens, I think, will be the centre of the army, plus some Sisters of Silence for scoring, maybe the Blade Champion, Trajan, and Shield Captains to lead, maybe a Caladius tank for a bit of fire support, perhaps a Caladus Assassin or Kyria Draxus to support from the Imperial Agent side of things. Overall, they're definitely looking a lot more improved, look like a pain to deal with for certain armies once more, with the chunky golden stat lines a bit more worth it. I still probably rate them towards the lower end of this tier though, could have been a tier 2. Next up we've got the Greenskins, generally been having a fairly good time of it in 10th, Melee Rush being their best way to play, and winning around about 51% at big tournaments before. For the data slate changes, they got a few points cut, the boggies all went down, the big transports like the Battle Wagon and the Kill Rig got quite significant points cuts, as did Killer Cans, and the Morganaut went down a bit too. The Truck and Knobs went up a bit, both 5 points each, and the Squig Hogs went up a bit more at 15 points increase, all the way up to 125, and that does fall on a few of their more competitive units. Overall, between all that though, I'd still guess that Melee Rush Orcs will still be the way to go, their Codex isn't too far away. I feel like the trucks and the knobs haven't really increased enough meaningfully to actually change things too much, just a 5 points on both of those still has them both as great data sheets. Squiggasaur bosses, Mosrol Scrag Bad, Beast bosses and War bosses are all great. Captain Badrock with Flash Gits are pretty nice, Storm Boys for scoring objectives, and Gretchen for sitting on points and farming CP. For the actual changes, I feel like Battle Wagons and Kill Rigs might be some of the things that are more likely to actually break through versus trucks a tiny bit more now. Battle Wagons as cheap as 160 I think is nice. The Squig Hog Boys do seem okay still, but I feel like they're going to be taken in lesser numbers than they were at 125. Overall, I'd say they've lost a little bit of power, but haven't lost too much, maybe compared with some of their peers that were stronger than them taking bigger hits. Speaking of which, I feel like the Leagues of Votan might fall into that category, being really quite strong before, with win rates around about 54%, one of the strongest armies in the game, though maybe not quite as big tournament wins compared with some, perhaps a few less clever tricks than some of the other factions out there. Games Workshop hit them with a trio of points nerfs, the Brockier Thunderkin, the Sagittor and the Einir Hearthguard all going up a bit. Quite a big deal when they're three of the best units in a U army that doesn't have that many unit choices. I feel like perhaps the biggest winners of the update might well be the Einir Hearthguard, which I still think are great at 160 points. Maybe the Hecaton Land Fortress might see a bit more play in top list versus Sagittors now the points went up a touch, and otherwise there might be a bit more emphasis on their bikes. Overall, I think they still feel closer to mid-tier, but still okay. The points nerfs did hit fairly appropriate units in my opinion. I'm sure the Kin will still be a force to contend with on the battlefield. Finally, that just leaves us with one army, and as I have mentioned in previous videos, I feel like the Necrons might be pushing ahead into a league of their own, or we could call it a Necron tier. Before the updates, Necrons had already gained themselves a fair bit of notoriety. Win rates were around about 57%, so they were rivaling Eldari there, certainly taking home their share of big event wins, notably winning the Las Vegas Open with Mr. Laura's Hypercrypt Legion. I feel like just given those tournament performances, it's going to be hard to see how they wouldn't be the strongest army in the game, or at least one of them after the update. Just about every major competitor that they has got hit by heavy nerfs, Chaos Space Marines, Eldari, Black Templars, Leagues of Votan, and World Eaters all got toned down at least a bit, and sometimes a lot, whereas Necrons got absolutely no changes. Having said that, I do feel like Necrons maybe as a whole are perhaps dependent on just a few key units to really keep them at this sort of excessive level. The Catan do feel undercosted when they've got access to the big redeploys of Hypercrypts, Based on Technomancers, just feel like a challenge to deal with in general, and rarely feel like a bad choice, and particularly not in Canoptic Court, where they have the massive rerolls that on offer, and otherwise they do have a good immortal battle line, with a bunch of handy characters in support, the very cheap Illuminor Seraz now, and again I think they can both be really interesting in both Canoptic Court and Hypercrypt. I was sort of surprised that Games Workshop didn't make a few changes to Necrons in the balanced data slate. If absolutely nothing else, I feel like either a points increase for Catan or some sort of limitation to how well they can use Hypercrypt would make really quite a lot of sense. Perhaps if the Catan were just a bit more of a viable choice but not as massively auto-include as they are, then perhaps the Necrons might be a bit more towards Tier 1 as opposed to here, but until that happens I feel like they're probably the strongest army in the game. I guess we'll see if that holds true to tournament results. Though it does look like they started strong in the first weekend, 
Out of 12 podium spots available, Necrons took five of them. I guess we'll see if they manage to continue doing that. In any case, let me know your thoughts on the tier ranking. I'm sure there'll be plenty of people with their own interpretations. Let me know if you think that any armies are either stronger or weaker than I said, or you think there's going to be any interesting builds or different units being used. Look forward to hearing your thoughts down in the comments below. If you've been enjoying the videos on the channel, then feel free to subscribe to All Specs Tactics. I'll certainly try and keep the regular 40k content coming. I do aim to post new 40k stuff just about every day. Finally, if you have been enjoying all the videos on the channel, I would just like to mention that All Specs Tactics does have a Patreon page as well, and you can find that linked in the video description if you'd like to help support and keep these videos coming. Channel patrons do get a fair few advantages, seeing certain videos early, regular votes to see what sort of things come next on the channel, and automatic entry into the regular prize giveaways with a chance to win some big model kits each month. If any of that sounds good to you, or you'd just like to help support, the link is down in the video description. In any case, a massive thank you for listening, and I'll hope to see you guys next time.